Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie and I read a lot of books. If you have been here before, you'll know that I've got a new background. I organised my bookshelf this morning. It was just a mess. And so, yeah, you can see things. That is my drink I've got up here. And uh, yeah, just a little bit more organised. No, I am not a rainbow thing. It's not in any type of order other than books that I want to read. I've got all my Tess Gerritsen books here and I've ordered a few more because I realised that I've got them all in order here but there were a few books that I didn't have so uh, yeah they're on their way. Okay. Yeah so today I've got a big book, I say a big book, it looks big because uh, it's slightly bigger than the average book on my bookshelf. Aha! So today's book is If You Could See Me Now by Cecilia Ahern. Is that okay for light? It's a beautiful book. Oh, it's like gold and pink and yellow and yeah it's just beautiful anyway let's get in with that blurb shall we in the town of hearts one woman has hers under lock and key everything in elizabeth egan's life has its place from the espresso cups in her gleaming kitchen to the swatches and paint pots of her interior design business order and precision keep life under control and keep elizabeth's heart from the pain and hurt she has suffered in the past the only cloud on the horizon is her sister Sersha, a red-haired whirlwind she's always leaving behind pieces which Elizabeth struggles to pick up, including her six-year-old son, Luke. Being a reluctant mother while trying to keep her business on track is a full-time job, one which leaves little room for error or fun. Until one day a stranger unexpectedly comes into their lives. Ivan is carefree, spontaneous and always looking for adventure everything that Elizabeth is not. In no time at all he has crept under her skin and started to change her life in ways she could never have imagined. But Elizabeth knows little about Ivan, who he is and whether he is everything he seems and whether there is a future for their blossoming relationship. Yeah, the blurb doesn't give you half the story. <laughs> So yeah, this is about a uh, woman in her 30s called Elizabeth Egan, who is an interior designer, and she looks after her sister Saoirse's six-year-old son? I want to say six. <laughs> He's like five or six. And his name is Luke. It's very clear that she had a bit of a traumatic childhood, and you do get information about that story throughout the book through flashbacks but yeah so Elizabeth is very organized uh, she's very clean which is commented on by Ivan throughout the book I'll talk about Ivan in a second because that's a whole thing to unpack there if you've read Cecilia Rohan books before you'll know that she does a lot of magical realism this book is no exception basically this book isn't about an invisible friend Luke Elizabeth's sister Saoirse's son has developed a friendship with an invisible friend and I do say invisible friend I say invisible friend as opposed to imaginary friend because you get the point of view of Ivan in this book you get the point of view of the invisible friend and I've never read a book like that before where you're getting the point of view of a character who you technically should not be hearing from I think the only other book which has kind of done that Lovely Bones by Alice Seabold, where uh, you get the point of view of a young girl who's dead. And you know she's dead from the beginning of the book. That's the only one other one I can think of off the top of my head of books where you hear from the point of view of somebody who you technically should not be hearing from. I'm sure there's plenty of other books out there that have done the point of view of somebody who's dead or somebody who just isn't there. It's hard to describe that because I'm not aware of any other books that talk about imaginary friends from the point of view of an imaginary friend. But in this case, he's not imaginary, he's just invisible. And that's what makes it so interesting, because the very first chapter of the book, you get the point of view of Ivan before you, you know who he is when he meets Luke in Elizabeth's front garden. But yeah, looking after... Luke has just completely transformed her world because it's nothing that it's not that she expected to have to do it um, but her sister Saoirse is just a mess an alcoholic and you can always find her down the pub and it's obviously a person who just was never meant to have children but at the same time it's one of those things where 
Luke is probably the best thing that ever happened to Elizabeth, uh, but she just doesn't know it yet. And yeah, it's a book about love and heartbreak and overcoming trauma in the case of Elizabeth. And when you find out what Elizabeth has been blocking, it's like repeated history, really. Because what she's blocked out from her childhood in regards to her own mother, you realise that it's something that's happening again. And yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a very sweet book, but it's also a very powerful book about what Elizabeth goes through. Yeah, the reason it's, it tugs at your heartstrings so much is the fact that obviously the invisible friend is supposed to be there for Luke, but then suddenly Elizabeth starts to be able to hear him. And then to the point where she actually is be able to see him, there came a point in the story where it was just like, wait, if this is going the way I think it's going, is there going to be like a love story here? Is she going to fall in love with him? In, is Ivan going to fall in love with her? And then what does that mean for the rest of it? Because he's still invisible and nobody else can see him. And so what does that mean for any potential relationship between these two characters? So there is a love story in there, but really tugs at your heartstrings. <laughs> it's quite beautiful. There was a point towards the end of the book I almost wanted to cry when I realised that we were getting the story of what happened with Elizabeth's mother because when Elizabeth was very young and her sister was very young their mother walked out on them and Elizabeth was always convinced that her mother was going to come back she kind of looks back on that time through rose tinted glasses slightly she doesn't really know what happened but then as an adult once she kind of gets through that relationship with Ivan and the way Ivan kind of opens her eyes and goes you're very straight laced and all this and let's try and get that kid back out again that's what it feels like anyway because you tend to associate invisible and imaginary friends with children and it's that it's kind of like the idea of like Santa Claus and things like as you get older you get very a bit more pessimistic and you kind of lose that child fun and I mean Ivan is presented as quite childlike throughout the story even though he's presented as an adult he is very childlike in the way that he plays with I mean as an imaginary invisible friend a lot of the time he's with children so he knows how to interact with children you know he's essentially a child himself even though he presents as a six foot tall 30 year old man <laughs> yeah it's just it was just a really really sweet book and it definitely wasn't what I thought it was going to be because obviously on the in the blurb there's no mention of the invisible friend it's only once you start the book that you're just like oh oh okay so yeah, so you get the point of view of Elizabeth and Ivan throughout the book. And the friendship that Elizabeth has with Ivan once she's able to see him uh, leads to some quite comic moments in the book where she's interacting with a invisible six foot tall man who nobody else can see. So when she's at her office and she sees Ivan in a desk chair when she's supposed to be having a meeting, she's there going, Ivan! And everyone else in the room is just there going, who's Ivan? Who's she talking to? Because nobody else can see him. So the moment of clarity for her when she's just like, wait, hang on a second. I have been having a relationship and a friendship with this man for like two months. I've had like coffee dates with him. I've been outside with him. He's done, we've done all these wonderful things together. And she goes back to those places that she was and just like, you saw me with Ivan, didn't you? They start describing somebody else completely. And then she's like, wait, no, you're talking about somebody else. You know, Ivan, the six foot tall man. And everyone's just going, I've never seen you with anybody like that. And that moment when she's just like, wait, have I been, have I somehow made friends with my nephew's imaginary friend? And yeah, it just seeing that friendship and how it blossoms and then seeing from Ivan's point of view in the sense that at the beginning he thought he was there for Luke and then realising oh actually I think I've actually been put here for Elizabeth because you realise that Elizabeth has completely lost the child within I mean a lot of adults do it happens as people grow up become more cynical and more sarcastic that's me um but 
yeah, as you get older, you tend to kind of go away from like things that you liked as a kid. I feel like we do embrace it a little bit more now. Like I'm always going to be a Disney fan, you know. I love reading. I'm, uh, I I can escape. And the fact is, there are some people who are just like, no, that's not for me. And fair enough. But like for me, I like being able to tap into that in a child. And you know, I can enjoy Disney as an adult. Some people might just think of it as a theme park holiday. And for me, it's just like I enjoy the Disney side of it. I like enjoy the kid side of it. I like being a big kid. And in this this story, Elizabeth was forced to grow up very quickly based on what happened with her mother uh, leaving at a young age and the way she essentially became a carer to her sister and her dad when her mum left. And just seeing how that moment in her childhood completely changed her life. And then Ivan comes in ready to go, okay, let's kind of break down that barrier a little bit. Let's kind of pull out a bit of that inner child. Let, let you have fun. Because she's not having fun. And yeah, <laughs> I could talk for ages about this book. Despite what you see on the surface, it, go it goes very deep. And yeah, I think that's the thing about Cecilia O'Hearn books. A lot of the time it can seem uh, quite like surface level, like when you first get in there. And then as you go through, you just like, oh wait, this does go a lot deeper. I've read a few Cecilia O'Hearn books. And one of my favourite other books that I've read by her was A Place Called Here. And it was about a woman who goes missing, but finds herself in the place where lost things go. And just realising how deep that went, really especially in regards to in that storyline to the girl realising that a girl that disappeared when she was a kid was in the place called here and yeah it's just it's beautiful stuff it's beautiful stuff there is so much more to the story than what I've just said as I said as you go through you get flashbacks from her childhood you see that relationship between her and her sister and her and her father the relationship she once had with her mother and as how the flashbacks go through you realize just how much more there is to unpack from her childhood and how she's become the woman she's become it's what happens when i finished the book five minutes ago and i'm still processing it <laughs> it's just it's a beautiful book uh, this is definitely one i want to keep on my bookshelf and i'll probably go to my mum and say read this book because we're going on holiday in about a month so i'll probably see if she wants to take this one on holiday with her though it's a big to pack <laughs> it'll have to go in the carry-on but yeah if you could see me now by cecilia Ahern. if you like magical realism this is a beauty of a book to get your teeth into uh, but yeah so thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and i will see you next time with another video <laughs> i've got a hair on my mouth <laughs> but yeah mm, love you thanks for watching mm.